The geolocation API built directly into the browser which allows for the ability to obtain a user's location. This can be used for a variety of different things such as plotting a marker on a map with a user's location, showing relevant content based on that user's location, or just to simply stalk the users of your websites. Whatever your needs may be, let's take a closer look at how we can use this. Now before we dive into that, if you are enjoying the video, be sure to scroll down below and drop a like on it as it really does help out the channel. Now to access the API, we first need to reference what is called the navigator object, which contains information about the browser. Now within this object, we have a property called geolocation, which is how we start to work with this API. Within this object, we get access to three different methods. The first one is called get current position, which simply is going to return you the current location of that particular device. Next, we have the method called watts position, which is very similar to the get current position method, but what this is going to do is actually enable a watcher, which is going to listen for the device's location to change and then fire a callback every time it does. And finally, we have a method called clear watch, which is just going to then remove that particular listener that you may have enabled if you were using the watts position method. Now that we have an idea of how this API works, let's hop over to the code and see how we can retrieve a user's location while using the get current position method. Now first we want to reference the navigator object, then we want to access the geolocation property, and then we want to specify the get current position method. Now this method takes in two different parameters, one for a success, one for an error, and there's also a third one you can pass which is optional for some options you may want to configure. For the options, we're going to store these in a variable called options and the three different options or parameters that we can define are called maximum age, enable high accuracy, and also a timeout. The maximum age parameter is going to set in milliseconds the maximum time that the application is going to accept a cast position. The default value for this if we don't pass anything is zero, meaning that if we do a refresh no matter what, it's always going to return a fresh position. But for example, if we change the value to something like 10,000, which is 10 seconds, then if we do a refresh on the page and the cache value is less than 10 seconds old, then it's not going to re-retrieve a new position, it's going to use the cache position. The enable high accuracy param is a boolean value and this is going to indicate whether or not you want to receive the best possible results. So if you do enable this, you're going to receive a much more accurate position for that current device. It is worth noting that if you do set this value to true, then you could see a slower response time. Now by default, this value is set to false and for the most part, this is going to be sufficient enough for what you're going to be using this API for. And last, we have the timeout param, which is going to set a maximum amount of time that we want to wait for the get current position to return us a position. Now, the default value is going to be infinity, meaning that it won't actually return or resolve until the position is available. Now, upon a successful retrieval of the user's location, we're going to create a function called success. And we're going to take in a parameter here called position or POS for short. And inside of this function, we're just going to create a variable called chords and we're going to set equal to the param of POS and within this param, we're going to have access to an object called chords. And this is going to have all the information on that device's location. Then for this example, we're just going to log out to the console, our variable of chords. Now in the event that we're unable to retrieve the user's location, then we're going to run this function called error, which will take in a param of error, which is just going to have the message of why it failed. And for this example, again, we're just going to simply log out to the console, the error message that we receive. And here inside of the browser, as long as the user has allowed the use of their location, you're going to see here inside of our console, our logged out value here of chords, which is going to contain the latitude and the longitude value of that current device. So if the user does deny the use of their location, then we're going to catch that properly within our error handling function, which what we're doing is it's going to log out of the console, the error message that we receive, which is going to be that the user has denied their geolocation. And that's all you need to do to obtain the location of a user's device. So that is going to wrap it up for the video here. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and learn something new. Now, if you do want to see how we can use this API in a real world project, I do have a few videos here on the channel that are on the screen now that you can check out where we actually use this API. So anyways, thank you for watching. If you do have any suggestions on any other topics you want me to cover, be sure to leave them down in the comments and I will see you in the next one.